what else do we have here oh it's this courtesy of mix mag <laughs> it's hilarious coachella has somehow managed to postpone their festivals for a third time now how do they always get to do this is this like a i'm i'm suspecting this is more so a, a tax scam or some sort of hustle where if you kind of um say you're postponed it means you're not liable to pay certain monies or not i, I think so because this doesn't make any sense it's clearly they weren't going to be on this year why do they keep like postponing it just say it's not on and just redo it another year this postponement thing is very strange um it says here for mixed michael Church reportedly rescheduling from october 21st october 2021 to april 2022 which is the original dates usually according to a report for variety which is basically the, the pr um unit of coachella it says here source cited two industry sources with knowledge of the situation the festival's promoter golden voice and its parent company aeg presents did not respond to requests of comment the reasons given is ongoing certainty with um, uh, with the plausibility of throwing large scale events this year due to pandemic Coachella attracts 125,000 people that's mad in it um, over the course of each day from all over the world making it right for potential disease transmission to spread that's true because you that's what you forget as great as it is for people living in North America there is a big international audience that goes there too because the lineups are insane um, so they don't want to you know be at risk of inviting people from abroad coming over and then spiking up the cases so they suspected that Coachella's country music sister event stagecoach festival will move as well if the report is accurate this will mark the fourth fourth rescheduling a festival that has not taken place since it rescheduled in april 2020 um the event wasn't able to go ahead due to the pandemic at the time it initially rescheduled for october yeah that was the funny bit you remember they tried to reschedule it for later in the year they thought they could get away with it like these people went before officially cancelling its 2020 edition altogether and then planned a 2021 edition was reportedly postponed to 2022 2021 again so they've done it every single year um other festivals in the u.s are still expecting to go ahead and move forward their plans there's a big difference between having two weekends at coachella and california and throwing a country festival in florida one source said so yeah um not really surprising news i think most people with a brain would have assumed that this wasn't going to happen um but again i guess you know if you were waiting with bated breath to go to coachella this year then it's going to be next year at the earliest um i would probably say don't even hold your breath for next year good things what well, actually do hold your breath america's usually you know they're not really giving a shit about covid they're doing it the way they want to do it so there's probably scope for you to go and do that going forward next year we have a new open air club is opening in manchester square one will open on june 26 which is great to see i think even though with the pandemic loads of places have ended up closing down and we've lost we've lost a lot of night spots we've lost a lot of record stores and venues in general we've lost a lot and i'm pretty sure when things reopen up again it's going to be really sobering to see all the places that we know and love prior that have gone forever it's also given opportunity for people to get a little bit unconventional because i'd assume the first couple of weeks or maybe the first month or so after everything's reopened from june 21st onwards it's going to be a bit of a it's going to be a bit of a free-for-all um the you know the the rules are going to be loosened somewhat people are going to be able to put on more things outdoors and maybe not so many limits on sound all that kind of stuff so it's going to give people an opportunity to get a bit creative with the spaces that they you know set up and open and whatnot and this looks something similar because we don't really have a lot of these sort of open airy type things in the uk which makes sense considering the weather's always shit but I still think there's a scope to be a little bit more ingen ingenious, ingenuitive, or whatever, ing ingenuitive, whatever that word is, when it comes to opening up clubs and setting them up. So this is a thing here from Mix Mag. It looks pretty sick, isn't it, right? Like this amazing little arch thing with the massive screen on it, with obviously the uh, standard containers. There's going to continue. This is it. Um, Manchester's getting a new club, open air space called Square One. The venue will be open from June 26th at a site near Piccadilly Station, which is right outside the station. And its opening party will feature Dennis Salter, Enzo Siragusa, and Hot Since 82. You know the deal. Tech House, Tech House, Tech House to the day we die. Tech House and Disco. So you know what crowd you're going to get when you go there, but I, I wouldn't mind going still. Square One builds itself as an open air clubbing destination and the summer calendar boasts parties from the Zootech, Jika Jika, Animal Crossing, and Amsterdam Base 
face label PIV. Parties will run from 2 p.m. until 11 p.m., which is awesome. A statement from the venue Reeves Magister is our home. This is one of the dancers, a new venue with no nonsense. Let's make up the lost memories and come together. A good and proper open air affair. Summer is coming and the dance floor is ready. Sick, in it, right? I really, I'm a big fan of what it looks like. So let's check out the Instagram. Let's see what they've got up there in terms of visuals of the place. Not so much, nothing yet. They've got obviously, you know, a little bit of uh, information on who's going to play. Um, I would hope the lineup would be a little bit. Oh, look, there's a little bit of an idea of what it looks like over. So it's just near the station, which it makes good, which makes a lot of gives me a lot of hope in terms of sound limits right um, next to a motorway there's probably not a lot of limits that way because that was same thing that happens to junction 2 festival here in london it's sick because it's legitimately underneath a, in underneath junction um, in terms of a bridge that goes over on the motorway so they're able to really crank up the volume um, and maybe get a bit creative of how they use the space so that'd be pretty sick and i'm just hoping they also just tap into a local community in it like book some people that are local and well known in that scene over there and just basically give them a platform to reach a wider and bigger audience no real need to go out there and book massive people to come and play these sort of events especially if it's sort of, sort of like a temporary space that's sort of just done in part with a community thing kind of Thing. I don't know whatever they got to deal with it doesn't make no sense to go out and get all the bait people that play a circle local and stuff it's better just to kind of tap into a local scene so hopefully that gets done but yeah it does look pretty sick to be fair I'm a big fan of it should be a good should be a good vibe um everyone doing their thing and getting down in the summer that is square one in Manchester opening I think no tickets already sold out opening Jesus right it looks like opening schedule tickets sold out deals the next show coming soon pre register below mad mate all sold out already anyway so check it out but yeah sold out for now what else do we have here oh yeah this is a big one isn't it this is a big one in terms of direction maybe gives us some hope going forward so this is courtesy of mix mag prince works announces a mammoth reopening weekend the london club will reopen in september um i still never actually been i'm pretty sure if i'm not mistaken yeah, I've not gone. I've not actually been in, inside it. Actually, I've been around it, but I've not been inside the place. Um, they usually have pretty decent lineups. Um, the only thing that puts me off, as per usual, is the crowd. You know, London is always like that. The venues are not too bad. The lineups are always pretty sick, but it's usually the crowd that goes to the particular lineup that you want to avoid. Um, but with it being post-COVID, I think everyone's going to be up for a laugh. It's going to be a little bit less pretentious than it usually is. And it's going to, just going to be a free-for-all. So I think this is probably the best time to go to these kind of places and re-experience them. And I'm sure they've probably done some improvements, you know, changed things around a bit. It's just going to be a nice to sort of experience it anew, again, with open and fresh eyes. So the article says the following. Pretty much has announced a mammoth reopening weekend. The London Club is going to go back to basics, quote unquote, for free opening parties on September 17th, 18th, and 19th. So they're basically holding off right until towards the end of the year. I wonder why they're not kind of doing stuff straight out of the gate in July, but hey. Um, the parties have been announced around the concept of Redacted, which will be a pure celebration of club culture where, with no lineups announced in advance and a rule of no social media, no cameras, and no distractions. Oh, I love that, right? Um, it's funny because this venue is obviously heavily dependent on the lineups right the lamps are super uh stacked usually and very diverse they cover everything from drum and bass to dubstep to edm to tech or no whatever right they really do well in terms of who they book and who they allow to use that space blah blah blah, blah. so that does really well so for them to go for this sort of uh you know approach even though i still know for the most part i'd imagine it's still going to be the, all the big names but the fact that they're not publicizing it and making it into a thing of like hey let's just kind of you know we spent all enough time in front of the computer watching streams on our phone all day for this one occasion when we're actually going to be back in this club let's probably just put all those things to the side and just enjoy the space that we're in now i'm sure it's not going to last long because there's been a few places in london that have tried to do the whole burger guy no pictures no cameras thing it just doesn't work right as you know i guess brits we just don't you know we want to we want to remember the shit that we're doing because we're too shit faced because we get too fucked up too early so there's no real scope for being able to tell people not to take pictures and record stuff they're just going to do it anyway so that's probably not going to work long term 
but it's still commendable that they're doing it and it definitely is going to add a different it's, i would imagine it's going to add a different sort of vibe and ambiance to the spot when you're in there um it continues previous promises free carefully curated events featuring the world's venues um featuring the venue's favorite artists and its usual top tier audiovisual production um if i didn't get here from the site itself they got a great little graphic there showing it redacted redacted I think they were sold out as well, which is even great, right? Which is, makes it, maybe it's another indication of just how the appetite of people going out and maybe it's a changing overall in terms of the approach because that would be good to see because this will definitely um, signal the return um, or the reintroduction of resident DJs, which I've been pushing for a lot because obviously it will favor me, right? Myself being a kind of, you know, a, a DJ on the up and coming, on the up and up, up and coming, whatever that is, whatever that means to be said there's more scope or more opportunity for me to get involved to play at these kind of places if they do have a resident dj program because that allows people to basically get some training um you know learn how to cultivate a crowd learn how to keep people on the dance floor how to read a room uh, maybe allow you to basically play in front of a you know a ready-made audience that don't really know you uh, boost your boost your basically fan base well, you know improve your ability to dig and to craft a set bloody blah 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 and it's something that's been a staple usually in continental europe in places there's always had people that they've kind of counted on as residents um but for some reason in the uk it's not really a thing maybe because of licensing laws places don't stay open enough long enough to basically allow the bar managers and the event bookers opportunity to test things out like that they need to just guarantee that they can get tickets and get people to spend money at the bar so you're just going to go books fan bar to play because you know he's going to sell a certain amount ricardo Verlobos, you know all these kind of people so i get it but in terms of the health of the overall scene it's kind of suffered right because now we have a real separation we have all the big events and then we have all the events that are just done on the kind of underground local scale and there's no rule in between that's the issue right you go from playing in warehouses with 200 people and then suddenly you're playing and flipping print works with a thousand there's nothing in between in terms of level in terms of area in terms of fan but it's just a bit strange in that regard but if they if print works do something like this going forward again i don't expect them to do this forever but if they have certain nights maybe like a thursday a sunday wherever that they just dedicate to a redacted night that would be sick i think that'd be sick but yeah so far we've got 17th 18th and 19th um saturday and sunday are already sold out was it friday saturday whatever those two days are sold out already um says here for a long time for a long overdue return to the dance we're stripping it back to basics the uh, uh, painstakingly created over the lockdown months artists agents have go joined together in a supporting our vision to delivering three distinct uh, distraction free shows with each event celebrating a different element of the dance music spectrum artists for each show will be revealed at the event we are implementing a no photos on the dance floor policy at each show the pre-sale tickets da, 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 da. but yeah sick in it man I, i'm i'm a big fan of it i, I like this approach hopefully it is received well because that's the whole the only thing with these sort of things if people like us don't receive them well we don't buy tickets we don't go then it just tells the you know the owners and the bookers and whatever it may be that this is not what we want and then they just go back to what they know that works already so if we do want a more interesting nights out and we do want to see our friends that are toiling away producing in their room and playing in underground raves to play these sort of big platforms we need to support these sort of things and then hopefully vote with our feet vote with our wallet and we see that stuff be repeated over and over again in the future because that'll be sick that would be sick